And Sam joins us now on the show. Sam, it's Michael, Don, and Peter. How are you doing today? What's going on, guys? Uh, doing great. All right, stacking awesome. wins two in a row. That's got to feel good, right? Yeah, yeah, it felt really good to, to get this win on uh, on Sunday. You know, hopefully we can just uh, continue to stick with the process and you know continue to have another good week and another good uh, another good team win on uh, Sunday. All right, so a couple of wins in a row since Miami. So what's different? Uh, confidence level, game plan. What's so different between this team now than in that loss in Miami? Um, I think as an offense, uh, I think we're executing a lot better. Um, and when we have really good drives, uh, we're not satisfied. You know, we're we're making sure that you know the next drive is even better, and we're we're making sure that we're staying on schedule with everything that we're doing. And you know, when our defense makes huge stops, which they did a ton of the last couple games, uh, we're we're trying our best to make sure that we when we have good field position and they put us in a good situation. Uh, that we're taking advantage of it. Now, there was a story in The Athletic that really caught my eye, and I, I really said I can't wait till I ask Sam about it. So you seem like you were upset with the offense. You walk into Gase's office, and, and the story kind of had you as red-faced, and you were angry, and you said, we've got to pare this down. What happened there, Sam? How accurate is that story? No, 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 that's, <laughs> that's not the case at all. Um, for me, I just, you know, after a few weeks, after feeling really comfortable, um, really having a full understanding of the offense um, more so than, you know, I could really ever have in training camp or even in the off season. Um, you know, I felt really good to just have, you know, a conversation with, with coach about, um, you know, kind of the structure of everything. And, um, you know, we didn't, you know, nothing was changed. It was just a conversation of what I liked, um, what I disliked, and then, you know, what he liked and what he disliked. And we just kind of, you know, had a back and forth conversation um, about certain things, and it went really well. And you know, it was something that definitely, you know, it was it was good that it happened. But you know, it's continuing to happen, even you know after after the fact. You know, every single week, um, I meet with coach and, and make sure that we're we're on the same page. And uh, you know, it's it's really good uh, that those things are happening. I think it's. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's incredibly mature for a 22 year old quarterback to go in there and say, you know, let's talk this through. Was that a tough trip to the office for you to make, to have that conversation with Gase? Um, I mean, from that aspect, uh, you know, me being a young player and, you know, him being a head coach, and, um, you know, he's seen a lot of football. Mm -hmm. um, from that aspect, it, it could be. Um, but, you know, I think the thing that made it a lot easier than I think, you know, people might might have thought was – the fact that Coach Gase in the first place makes it super easy for me or anyone else, any other player to go up to him, you know, because he's so personable. Um, you know, I said this all the time, you know, in the off season, but in between meetings, he was always talking to players one-on-one -on -one and having conversations about, you know, their family and football, um, all different subject matters. So I think for us, it was, um, or for me personally, um, I found it, very easy to be able to go up to him and, and have a conversation with him about, you know, certain things. Um, whether it's football or not, I feel like it's super easy to go up and talk to him. Now forget about wins and losses, just you personally. How far were you set back by the mono, and where would you be right now entering week 12 had you not gotten sick? Mm. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't think that's uh, – I'm not sure if that's easy to say or for me to for me to judge. I think – um, it, it's a total, uh, I think it, it just kind of is what it is. And that's, that's how I look at it. Um, you know, who knows where I would be right now if I, if I didn't have mono, um, early in the year, but you know, all that I know, is that it happened. Uh, it was a thing. And right now we are where we are. And, you know, all I can control is, is everything, um, that's happening in the present and, you know, beyond. So that's really all I'm focused on. And, um, you know, it's, who knows? Who knows where I would be if, if I hadn't gotten sick. Have you talked to the league to find out if your stats from yesterday's game actually count? Or when you play an amateur <laughs> team, does it not actually go towards your final stats? Go on, I'm saying. Uh, he's this is a Redskins fan. He's a Redskin fan. fan, so he's not making fun of you. He's making fun of his own team. Yeah, yeah, just now. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah. Was there anything um, good? Did you, see, did you see anything good on that team? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think, 
I think the defense is good. I think just on a couple scrambles, uh, you know, some guys, you know, they drop some coverage on a couple plays. Um, other than that, I mean, you know, their their front, you know, their D line and their linebackers are really good. Landon Collins is a really really good player. Um, obviously, Josh Norman is very well respected around the league and is a good player as well. So they got pieces. Um, they got a really good front, like I said. So, um, like I said, I mean, they just they dropped coverage a couple times. And that was really it. Such a polite kid. This is why I love him. <laughs> he can even make the Redskins not sound terrible. What did it mean to you and to the team, Sam, that Christopher Johnson did? This is our coach, and this is going to be our coach next year as well. What What does it mean for that stability, specifically for you? Because if for the unlikely reason they changed the coach, you'd have three different coaches, three different offensive coordinators in three different years. That doesn't go a long way toward helping you. Sure. Yeah, I mean, it's to, to be able to have stability and, and know that we're going to be stable for the next uh, however many years. Um, definitely in the next year, I think is it's awesome for Christopher to come out and say that. Um, it just gives you know our team. Um, I mean, we already had all the confidence in the world in Coach Gase, but it only helps that. Um, it only helps you know the players and in, in their confidence with with Coach. So, um, but I mean, it was just you know for Christopher to to come out and say that publicly. Um, it's not easy to do, but at the same time, with with Coach Gase and uh, his staff, I think you know it, it might have been easier than people thought. I wish that we could always listen in on the coaches after the game talking to each other. And I saw you talked with Dwayne Haskins, and we can only imagine what Haskins is going through. You know what he's going through. Did you give him any encouraging words? I just told him to keep his head up. I mean, you know, it's. And understand that it's a process. Um, I told him if if people are in that organization, they want to help you, which you know they wouldn't have taken you in the first round if they didn't believe in you. Um, you know, I just I told him to to just keep his head down and keep going to work and understand that it's a process, and that's that's really it. Do you have anything to say about Jamal Adams? I know there's offense and defense, but you kind of he's got he has six sacks in the last two weeks. He's a special player. Uh, I mean, I've seen it the last year and a half, and I've seen it in practice and training camp and all that. So um, I'm not surprised by it. Our defense as a whole is, um, I said it earlier in this interview, I mean, I'm stepping up to a whole nother level. Um, as an offense, there's some things we need to clean up and, and make their job a little easier. Um, but, I mean, they're playing lights out, and a lot of it is because of 33. Ryan Griffin, is. It looks like you and he are getting a good rapport. Is that a long time coming because of the three weeks off that you had? Um, <clears throat> Ryan's a really special player. I mean, the way that he, you know, the way that he comes into work every single day, um, you know, I just, that's the kind of guy you want around the locker room. That's the kind of guy you want as your teammate. Um, he comes into work every single day on and off the field and just, he works, and he doesn't care. He, and this goes for all the tight ends, really. They're so unselfish. Um, they're run blocking. Sometimes they're pass protecting. And when they get a chance, they're going to make their opportunities when it comes. So, I mean, you know, and they're going to be the first ones to congratulate other people when they do something good. And, you know, I haven't even I haven't even seen Ryan's, you know, quite, or, uh, answers to some of the questions that he got in, in his interview after the game. But I'm sure he's the first you know, his first words out of his mouth were congratulating, you know, everyone on his team for, for playing so well and putting him in the position to make plays. So that's just the kind of the kind of people that, you know, our tight ends are. And Ryan Griffin especially is a, is a really good player and will continue to make great plays for us. What are your thoughts on the Raiders? Um, yeah, I watched a little bit today. Um, good team. I mean, super talented team. Um, I just, you know, I got to watch more, but, Obviously, Derek Carr is a really good quarterback. Uh, John Gruden is a, you know, he's a he's a special coach, um, one of the best to ever do it. So um, we got our hands full, um, but we're excited for the opportunity, like every single week. You must feel a lot better coming to work after wins. I mean, that that stretch had to be awful. Yeah, I mean, it's anytime you lose, uh, you know, it's it's not fun. And so, you know, getting a couple wins in a row is good for. It's good for morale. It's good. Uh, it's good to have you know some energy in the you know in the building, and um, you know I think for us it's just it's continuing to have the mindset of being obsessed with the process. And if we can just keep that mindset, 
every single week. Um, you know, we'll keep having these hopefully positive interviews on Monday nights. Good stuff. Thanks, Sam, and congratulations. Good luck against Oakland. All right. Thanks, guys.